After the best part of a fortnight, the banks open again in Cyprus tomorrow afternoon amid tight security. But anyone lucky enough to have substantial amounts of cash won't be allowed to get all of it out so the banks don't collapse. There is real anger in the country. Why, people ask, has Cyprus been singled out for harsher medicine than other feckless EU states that got into trouble? Though it is not yet a formal policy of the European Union, what's happened in Cyprus is different from those cases where bankers have just been able to walk away from disaster with a big check from the taxpayer in their pocket. So could this new model catch on? More on that in a moment. But first, let's hook up with Paul Mason, who's in Nicosia. Paul. Jeremy, this is a country where tonight you can't cash a check. You can't get more than 300 euros out of the bank per day. And let's make this brutally concrete. It's never a good idea to wave cash around on the street, but this is what a grand looks like in euros. This is a thousand euros. And if tomorrow I go to the airport and leave this country with that and the loose change in my pocket, I'm breaking the law because that's the limit on the cash you can take out of the country. People with uh, fixed term deposits, they're saving the money for 12, 18 months, will be told they have to keep that money in there. These are draconian capital controls of a kind not seen in a modern developed country. And the reason they're implementing them is very clear. The big thing that's happening tomorrow on top of the law changing and the directive is that people with money in the bank find out how much they've lost. The bank behind me, Bank of Cyprus, uh, people with over 100,000 uh, will lose about 40% of what they've got. And you might say, well, so what? That, that's the rich. Well, this is a country that's been a, a trading nation. It's full of s small business people and farmers and plenty of people have got savings accumulated of more than 100,000. There are church restoration funds that are going to lose their money. The, the working capital of many businesses, as we'll hear later, um, is stored in banks like this. Um, now, this is the new face of bank resolution in Europe and what it effectively does is to make government debt, because the reason this is happening is to shore up the debt position of the Cypriot government, so government debt becomes safer than money in the bank. Some people think that's a good idea, others don't, as my colleague Joe Lynham reports. Despite the misery seen in Cyprus over the past week, it might in future be seen as the place where the tenets of capitalism were restored in Europe. That's because Cypriot banks will have been saved by their own depositors and senior investors rather than Cypriot taxpayers. And the Eurogroup president even suggested that the Cypriot bailout should become the template for all future Eurozone failures, though that was retracted after an angry market reaction. Nonetheless, there are plenty in Europe who think that senior bank investors will have to think long and hard about where they put their money. Well, I don't think that the risks are any different from what was there before, but they may uh, fear that they're more likely to be implemented, that uh, we're not going to see that banks are too big to fail, we'll let them fail, and then the investors bear the consequences. I think that's what's going on. And in some countries, this is going to mean that those that have got money above the uh, 100,000 euros limit are going to perhaps think, well, I'm going to go and put it in a country where I think it's safer, or I'm only going to put it into a bigger bank. So is there a chance that Cyprus could ever be a template for future bailouts? Nobody really believed banks were allowed to, would be allowed to collapse in the middle of the 1980s. It just never arose because they didn't. What has happened, and I wasn't at all surprised, is when a huge crisis hit, government stood behind banks. So w what was revealed is what really, if you thought about it, we already knew. What is interesting, in fact, is we've now moved to a situation where actually it is plausible that in some cases banks will default. Uh, not in all cases, not consistently, rather erratically. So you could say that we're getting to capitalism, but only because some governments are no longer able or willing to support their banks. Cyprus has been a game changer. Since the collapse of Lehman Brothers five years ago, governments have consistently chosen to spare big bank investors from any financial pain, lest it cause global contagion. The problem is that creates moral hazard. Banks who took risks and are then rescued are likely to take further risks. I think we've seen the beginning of the end of moral hazard. We've started to see the beginning of the end of constant taxpayer intervention. 
we're starting to see signs that the taxpayer is going to be liberated uh, from this burden of having to support banks. And I think that's great progress. I mean, I, I hope people will look back on the Cyprus bailout as, as, as a defining moment. Now, the Cyprus bailout has been incredibly badly handled, right? And there's been huge numbers of mistakes. There's more mistakes that are going to come. There's capital controls. There's all sorts of nightmares. But nonetheless, one good thing has happened, which is a bankrupt bank was allowed to fail. Uh, insured depositors were protected, but bondholders and very large depositors had to pay the price for this. If Cyprus were to become the template, then in the order of who would be stung first, it would have to be shareholders, followed by bondholders, and lastly, uninsured depositors, i.e. those with savings of more than €100,000. When it comes to Eurozone bailouts, comparing Ireland with Cyprus can be quite instructive. Both are relatively small economies with a bloated banking system which had loaned too much money during the boom years. But when it came to the Irish bailout two and a half years ago, the European Central Bank was very clear. Senior investors, senior bondholders should not lose a penny of their money, forcing the burden onto Irish taxpayers. The exact opposite happened in Cyprus. Senior investors and senior bondholders were burned first. Whereas Ireland is emerging slowly from its economic woe, Cyprus is only about to embark on its journey. And tonight, as armed guards restock empty banks with cash, ordinary Cypriots will doubtless feel aggrieved that they are bearing the brunt of this restoration of capitalism, a system under which they flourished until the crisis swallowed them up. Now, Shruti Baroness Badira is an investment banker who was business minister in Gordon Brown's government and one of the key architects of Britain's bank bailouts in 2008. She now sits on the boards of two major companies and runs a consultancy advising governments and investors. Philippe Lambert is a Green MEP and part of the European Parliament's Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee, which is working on a new framework for coping with failing financial institutions. He joins us tonight from Brussels. Uh, Mr Lambert, is this a policy we might see applied elsewhere, do you think? I would believe so, because that's exactly how we are building up the new piece of legislation that we are working on. And as your reporter indicated, the, uh, the bail-in order is shareholder first, bondholder second, and then uninsured deposits come next before any potential taxpayer involvement. And of course, everyone hopes that the buck will stop with bondholders, but in some cases we may go, as we are doing now in Cyprus, uh, to, uh, to uninsured depositors because we want to avoid taxpayers' involvement. And I think that is a fairer situation than the taxpayer bailing out all the others. OK. Now, Lady Fidel, would that approach have been feasible in our banking crisis here? I think it wasn't feasible in 2008. And if you remember, that was three weeks after the collapse of Lehman's and a global chaos in the financial um, um, sector and in the economies all over the world. So I don't think it would have been possible at that time. But of course, we have had a changes and a resolution um, regime put in place, uh, better capitalized uh, banks now, uh, better supervision, so that, in fact, we could do something like that now. And indeed, um, we have used the re resolution uh, regime once, for example, in the case of Bradford and Bingley. Well, even, even but in Europe... Even as big as ours, with big banks as big as ours? Well, I think that it's a matter of ensuring the building blocks are actually in place so that we're not having taxpayers subsidize the banks. In the end, what actually leads to things like the financial crisis is mispriced risk. And risk isn't properly priced if they think that the taxpayer is going to bail them out properly. So we do uh, always, so we do have to do this. We do, in the end, have to do this. The question is, do we have the building blocks in place in Europe? And I think they're still being worked on, right. uh, in, including the legislation and the fact that we don't have a proper supervisory system. The banks aren't completely cleaned up. They're not properly capitalised yet. Philippe Lambert, uh, the, it would raise the question of why, if you were one of these big investors we're told are so important, why would any of them bother to keep their money in the bank in any country where that sort of policy you're advocating might be implemented. Why would you keep money in a bank in Cyprus? Well, you have to keep your money someplace. And of course, you may elect to put it in hedge funds or elsewhere, but then that might be even riskier. Now, what is the likelihood in Germany, of a well-run bank 
Well, that, that would be an option. But then it's a question of, well, can well, the investors or the depositors have some discipline well, at choosing, in choosing their financial institution? And indeed, knowing that they, their deposits beyond 100,000 will not be necessarily safe, will force depositors to think twice about where they put their money. Sure, and I and think that the, that's part of market discipline. If the consequence of that is that banks in places like Cyprus or who knows where else start collapsing... That's not a problem? Well, I mean, if they start collapsing, that means that their business has not been well run in the first place. That's the, 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 the key issue here. I mean, I, I heard your reporter mentioning that this was an issue of public debt in Cyprus. Actually, the main problem that we are facing in Cyprus is two major banks that have been heavily investing in public debt in Greece and that have suffered from write downs of, of, of that uh, debt. So they were too heavily exposed into this Greek uh, debt with the end result that, well, they, they lost quite a bit of their, of their money. Now, this is also why we want to put in place large exposure limits that is preventing banks from being too highly exposed to any single particular risk. And in this case, it was Greek public debt. And well, that, that's part of the, the rules that right, we have okay. yet to put in place. Well, we... Lady, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, Cyprus is one thing, small country. Could they do it to a big bank in, say, Spain? Well, I think right now the question in Cyprus was they weren't well capitalized, they weren't well supervised, and a lot of the depositors were, as it turns out, uh, Russian depositors. And it was very difficult for, say, the German taxpayer uh, to be bailing out a Russian depositor. I think in Spain they've now been through a process where they've capitalized their banks and there is a resolution regime being worked on in the rest of Europe. I think the thing that worries me is small investors and small depositors. And what this was a question that was raised in Cyprus. This is what has led to a complete destruction in, of confidence. And by the way, the legislation that is being worked on in Europe is not crystal clear that they are protected. And I think that should be in place because they are not in a position to make the assessment of risk uh, uh, that Mr. Lombé is talking about. Mr. Lombé, you seem to have a very ideological view about this. I mean, the fact is that small businesses and small investors and ultimately entire vital parts of the economy are at risk if the sort of attitude you're espousing takes hold everywhere, aren't they? No, I, I wouldn't say so. I mean, you, you cannot... You you cannot disguise risk, you, cannot, you can just displace it. Now, if it weren't the small investors or the small business holders, it would be the taxpayers, like we have seen in Greece, like we have seen in Ireland. So anyway, if some business la la like this banks are not well run, then someone has to pick up the bill. And the question is, who does? Now, I prefer preventative measures than curative measures, but you have to prepare for the worst. And in that case, well, you have to solve the issue in the fairest way possible. And I know that this creates uh, unintended consequences. But again, uh, asking the Irish taxpayer or the Greek taxpayer to foot the bill uh, has also unintended co consequences. And then you have to look at that also from the angle of social justice. I mean, right. can okay. we make sure that those who have the broadest shoulders carry the largest weight? Lady Bidea? I think one of the things to be careful of is, is this going to cost the taxpayer more in the end than actually bailing out the banks. That is a quite an important test. So if you have big systemic banks, despite all preventative measures that still fail, and you have small businesses and households and large por portions of the population who are going to lose money, then you're going to crash the economy, as we're seeing in Cyprus, and that could cost taxpayers more than an ideological appro approach, which means you actually need to be very careful about how you implement this. It certainly wasn't implemented well uh, in Cyprus, and we are yet to see how it will be implemented in Europe. And I would say that that is something to be careful of before we start herring down the road of saying that it, every, everybody has to be bailed in regardless. Thank you both very much. Well, those are the general 